G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. Just remember, you're in the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user, Electric Bumblebee, titled, I, female 37, am furious at my niece, female 19, for posting a picture of me online, but my sister, female 40, doesn't want to get involved. Recently, there was a wedding in the family, and I was one of the bridesmaids. I was getting ready at my sister's house, along with some of the other family members. It's important to note that the dress was a corset back and very, very annoying to put on. But my husband, male 40, had kindly watched a how-to video and said that he would happily give me a hand getting it all on properly. The dress was causing a hassle and took much longer to put on than necessary, but eventually it was on and the wedding went smoothly. It was only after the wedding that I saw my niece had posted an album on Facebook with all the getting ready photos, and scrolling through it, one was taken of my husband and I as we struggled with the dress. I would like to note here that my husband and I were in a private room when getting ready, and the photo had been taken through the window. I had closed the curtains, but clearly had left a gap that was enough for the photo. It's not a very modest photo at all. My husband was trying to get the ribbons done up and had his hands under the dress, trying to make sure nothing was knotted and twisted from the inside. You can't see anything in the photo, but the dress is hitched up. I was furious immediately when I saw the photo. Why on earth would she post a photo of me getting dressed? I confronted her and she said that first, she posted it because she didn't have any other getting ready photos with me, and second, it showed mine and my husband's bond in that he was generously helping me. I told her that she had invaded our privacy in getting that photo, which is evidence enough I do not want it circulated. I also compared her to a peeping Tom, which is when it turned into a full-blown argument and my sister got involved. My sister said that I should be above name-calling and that my niece does not have to engage with someone who argues like a child. She also said that it was my niece's personal social media account and she can do with it what she wants. I said that it may be her social media, but it is a photo of me, which I have rights over. Besides, it was taken and posted without my consent. My sister said that it's up with the cops if I felt so violated, and then walked away. I'm not really sure where to go from here, but I just feel creeped out. I feel involving the cops would be throwing fuel on the fire, so any advice on navigating this would be appreciated. Honestly, I guess all you can do is make yourself a nuisance, report the post, get enough family members around this that you annoy them enough that it's easier just to take down that individual photo than it is to fight you constantly. That may be bad advice, but if they're so steadfast in not taking it down, I don't see what other options you're left with. In the comments, Dusty Graves says, Just report it on the social media platform? You can get it removed if it's a non-consensual photo of you. Besides that, distance yourself from your niece and sister, they don't respect you. Unfortunately, that won't necessarily do much. What do you mean? In my experience, Facebook have been good at taking down photos. My experience has been that Facebook takes no responsibility unless it's involving children, nudity, etc. They used to though, but the last few times I tried to report something, they basically just said that I should ask the person nicely to remove it, or hey, I could block and unfriend them so I wouldn't see the post anymore. Like that would solve the issue. They did nothing to help. The bigger concern here is, assuming she saw nothing wrong with the photo, that she hasn't removed it after you expressed outrage. She's 19. Maybe her and your ideas about what is appropriate are different, but she's old enough to do the right thing, in hindsight, with an apology. That's what I was thinking. I can see how she might be thinking it was a lovely photo and wanted to share it, but as soon as OP expressed that she wanted it taken down, why didn't she just do that, regardless if she agreed with OP's concerns or not? That's really odd to me. Don't you have the option to just go on said social media and report the picture? OP replies, I have reported the photo on Facebook, but all it says is that the photo will be investigated. I have not heard anything back, and it is still up. Kritek Jim says, It's a photo taken through a window without your permission, in a setting where you have a reasonable expectation of privacy. Your sister told you to take it up with the police, and I think she's right. You should take it up with the police. Edit, the reason the police will be all over this is precisely because they don't give a shit. It allows them to log a crime-solved stat without having to lift a finger or do anything remotely dangerous. 
They won't come to your burglary or robbery because that shit's hard. This is easy. They don't even need to find the person responsible. And now, on to the update. So I posted about two weeks ago asking for advice because my niece had photographed my husband and I through closed curtains while I changed my clothes and then posted the photo on Facebook. I had felt so violated and I turned to Reddit because I did not really know where to go from there. Something that I had neglected to mention in my initial post because I was worried it would end up being the topic of discussion is that I am a Muslim woman and I wear a hijab in day-to-day life. I did not think that this changed the fact that someone took a photo of me while I was getting dressed and posted it online, but maybe it helps people understand why I was so upset, given that the photo was not very revealing by non-hijabi standards. That being said, the bridesmaid's dress was modest when it was actually on, and I wore a hijab on the day. In light of everyone's comments though, I thought that I had maybe been too emotional when talking to my niece, and I realized that my comments calling her a peeping Tom had not helped. So I organized a coffee date with her and my sister at the local cafe so that we could have more of a heart-to-heart. I decided to not include my husband because they might feel more comfortable if they were just women in the discussion. Now, I would like to note that my sister and her family are not religious and my niece has never been religious, but she's always been around my family and is very aware of why I choose to dress modestly. She has never been disrespectful of this in the past, so I led with that. I said that I was upset because I had been violated in so many different ways when I had an expectation of privacy. I told her that it was always inappropriate to take a photo of someone through a closed curtain, but I felt even more exposed given that what she posted should not have been seen by anyone outside of who I feel comfortable with. I said that my bodily autonomy and my religion are both very important to me, and I felt like both had been discounted when I found the photo on Facebook. I also said that my choice had been taken away when she had refused to understand why I was upset and wanted it taken down. Side note, for those who commented that I should just report it, that was the first thing I did, and Facebook are allegedly still investigating, but the photo remains up. My niece's and sister's reaction was not what I expected at all. I went in hoping for a very honest and open discussion but they came right out the gate saying that they had spoken to one of my niece's friends who was studying law, and she, female 20s, says that given the photo was taken on my sister's property and through my sister's window into my sister's house, the photo legally belonged to my sister, and by extension, her family. No crime had been committed seeing as the landholder had given her permission. I said that that was illogical, and would mean that any number of crimes could be committed so long as the landholder gives their permission, but my sister just said that that's the law so I should take it up with the judge. It was like talking to a brick wall, so eventually I just got up, paid, and left. My husband said that I can probably go to a lawyer and get a cease and desist letter, or just something along the lines of asking that the photo be deleted, but I'm just so upset right now, I'm even struggling to think straight. The relationship seems to be over given the total lack of respect, but I never thought that it would be like this. I guess that my other option is the cops, but I don't want this to drag on for a million years. I know this isn't a happy ending, but the lesson for everyone is to always make sure that your curtains are closed. In the comments, Haunting Juice says, Just to summarize a long post, didn't see the first post looking for context, Your niece posted a photo of you and your husband changing to Facebook? Wearing a hijab or not, this is not okay behavior. I'm Australian and an atheist, and I'd never post a photo of my 8-year-old son in the bath, even if he was covered. If at 19 you're taking photos of people undressed, how are you not a peeping Tom? And OP replies, Thank you for the good idea. I'll put a TLDR at the bottom. For context, my husband was helping me get dressed and the dress was hitched up around my legs. My niece took a photo of this through a gap in a closed curtain and posted on Facebook, and the justification being that it showed mine and my husband's bond. She is now refusing to take it down. I agree that it's wrong and I feel incredibly violated, but unfortunately both my sister and my niece are incredibly unhelpful. Why90210 says, OP had the expectation of privacy. Photos in a public setting have a different set of parameters. Dressing room with shades drawn are nowhere near a public setting. I think OP can get the photos taken down. Also, this is a weird freaking hill to die on. I can't see why they wouldn't just delete the photo. Right? It's such a weird power struggle. I wonder if OP's religion is a secret factor here. It's gotta be. 
I'm interested to know if this is her blood sister or sister-in-law, and if so, where their deviation in faith came. Did OP become religious on her own, or did the sister leave the religion? Either way, it sounds like there is definitely some distaste, to put it politely, on the sister and niece's behalf, because the hijab is a serious, serious thing. Shake my head, people make me sick. But yes, being in a separate room with curtains drawn equals reasonable expectation of privacy. Doesn't matter whose freaking land they're on, morons. I wonder if OP converted for her husband. That might account for the resentment of her religion. I had combed through her history before, and it seems like she did convert. There's a deleted post where someone got upset with her for trying to learn Arabic, I believe for her husband. I think she also said that she's white. Certainly doesn't mean that she converted, but it is evidence of it. So according to her sister's logic, I can install hidden cameras as the homeowner to secretly watch my guests get changed, and it's perfectly legal because I own the home. Sister and niece made that up. I would go scorched earth. All fun and games till your logic gets used against you. I bet they'd change their tune real fast if someone did that. I think many people lack empathy. They literally can't picture themselves in other person's shoes. Honestly, I very much agree with that statement. I do think a lot of people lack empathy in situations like this. They can justify in their own heads like, oh, really, it's not that bad that we took this photo. Yes, we did invade your privacy, but come on, everyone's privacy gets a little bit invaded from time to time. Stop being pussies. And then, you know, OP uses that logic against them and suddenly they're butt hurt and because it's happening to them, suddenly it's a big deal. Or, you know, you could just have empathy, picture yourself in OP's shoes and realize, man, I'm being a dick. Anyway, talking myself in circles here, what do you guys think of this one down in the comments below? Our next post is by user Windfall Curse, titled Me 30 male with my girlfriend's 27 female family following my sudden inheritance. Feel like my life is shattering. Where do I even begin? I'm so lost right now, I don't even know how to put things into words or find a good starting point. I guess it goes with how two months ago, my life was exactly where I wanted it to be. I've been with a girl of my dreams, 27 female, for the last three and a half years. We have a house, animals, both of our families get along beautifully, and honestly, the last three years with her and my family and her family around the holidays have been some of the most warm, fuzzy memories that I've had in my entire life. And believe me, I've been thinking about those times a lot lately. So, like I said, this problem is going to come in parts because my entire life feels like it is on the brink of completely falling apart. My mother was a very, very wealthy woman. Most of my life, she and I did not get along very well, but I started working in the family business roughly five years ago, and since then, we've actually developed a great relationship. It was one of those things where after many years of feeling that my mother hated me, she was at last proud of me and not afraid to say that she loved me and valued me. Then last month in mid-March, she passed away. I'm tearing up thinking about this as I type because I've always felt that despite her resentment towards me in my early years, I loved my mother more than anyone else in the world. I won't say much more than that. She's had a hard life in spite of her wealth, and I feel I could write a whole book on our relationship. Anyway, she's gone, and my siblings and I are now extremely wealthy, and have taken possession of the business and all of her investments and property. If that isn't scary enough, I'm having a hard time figuring out what I need to do next. The business I was associated with, I can handle, and my siblings and I have really come together on this, and they seem to trust me with that part of it but it doesn't wash away the hurt and guilt that I feel that I only got a few good years with the woman who gave me life. Anyway, my plan is to marry my girlfriend by next year, and we have already discussed the prenup situation, which I will be getting due to my newfound wealth. She has been nothing but wonderful after my mum's death, but the problems come in her family. I won't go into too much detail, but I love these people, like an extension of my own family, but they already have started trying to pry exactly how wealthy I am out of my girlfriend, and her mom has always had a gravitational pull towards, for a lack of a better term, pyramid schemes. Her first sibling, Terry, just got married and is working a fast food job. Terry and his wife have decided that they will be starting a family soon and stated that they want wife to be a stay-at-home mom. This talk has only recently popped up and has been brought to my attention, 
and I feel like I'm being paranoid, has been directed at me as there is absolutely no way they would be able to afford this on the money that they currently make or even while living in their small apartments. Like, they're expecting me to help them out in a situation that they are wholly unable to handle right now. Sibling number two, Leslie, has run into some pretty serious legal trouble and is also pregnant. The father has a history of abuse and neither have steady incomes. They've recently come back into our lives after a four-year-long absence between girlfriend and Leslie. Though prior to this, the two have always been extremely close, as girlfriend is with all of her siblings. As throughout their childhood, a lot of the time all they had was each other. Sibling number three, Casey, who I hardly ever speak to, has even started chatting me up on Facebook more than she ever has in the entire time that I've known her. Is it just my brain developing into paranoia, or is this actually happening? Like the lottery horror stories you hear where people come out of the woodwork with their hands out when they smell money on someone they know. I know for a fact my mother, for all her faults, fell victim to this when she inherited this money. She became increasingly bitter throughout her life due to all of the husbands and friends that took advantage of her for what she could do for them. She drank herself stupid every day for 30 plus years and moved through carton after carton of cigarettes and alienated her own children. I don't want to be like that. I don't want that to happen. It's been less than a month and I've had more money than I know what to do with and I'm afraid to spend a dime or do anything with it because I feel like my girlfriend's family is only the beginning. What's worse, and will probably make me look like a total shithead, is my girlfriend has already committed to helping Leslie. They were close their whole lives, and with all of this legal trouble and pregnancy, girlfriend cries at night thinking about what's happening to her. She has not asked me to help financially or anything, but I've been there every step of the way to help support them and her as best as I can. But how will it look when my girlfriend starts giving out her money to people while I don't and get viewed as a selfish Scrooge? All of this is just too much. The last three years were so wonderful. So many magic trips to the beach, wonderful holidays, surrounded by not one but two families full of great people that accepted and loved me, and now it seems like, because I lost my mother and am getting a windfall because of it, everything is changing. I don't get to be happy with family anymore, and my whole life is crashing because of this. I know this is so far beyond a first world problem. Poor baby is now a multi-millionaire and is a little sad that he can't have a happy Christmas. Wah wah. But I feel so broken. I miss my mum. I don't sleep at all. I hardly eat. And despite knowing full well the path my mother went down, I've been drinking a bit and smoking weed more than I ever had. On a daily basis, in fact. My siblings seem to be coping just fine, and now I feel like everyone is out to get me. Even my girlfriend is getting a little tired of hearing me voice my concerns over girlfriend's siblings 1-3 to three, and her mum's sudden extra interest in me, which is understandable. They are all very close and take up for one another. Now I'm even doubting myself and thinking it's all in my head maybe. Too many times my mother drunkenly telling me about all the times she trusted people and was let down. I'm just so lost. To me it seems as though the linchpin here was the girlfriend. I don't blame her for not understanding the potential butterfly effect of releasing this knowledge into the world, but this doesn't seem as though it was knowledge that you willfully handed to her family. Because you have the unfortunate experience of seeing the corrupting influence of too much money in one person's life. This is just my opinion, but I don't think she understands how bad that is and what willingly giving up that information to her family will be like. As immoral as it potentially, yes, is, and I understand that, some things are better left unsaid for everyone because, yeah, these guys are falling upon hard times. You absolutely can choose to extend an olive branch if you'd like, but you're seeing the same thing that happened to your mom happen to you now. There's definitely Redditors that will give good advice. My advice would be to get professional help in how people that have gone through this handled situations like yours that you're dealing with right now. In the comments, I am just Jenna says, OP, I can sympathize. When I was 23, I came into a good deal of money. Nothing like what you describe, but a healthy amount that could have set my retirement for life had I been smart. I didn't inherit or win it. I got it because of a car accident settlement, but that didn't stop all the people coming out of the woodwork with their hands out. 
I lost friends. My best friend thought that I should buy her mum a house because when we were 16, we both said that's what we'd do if either of us won the lottery. When I refused, she got angry, and we aren't friends anymore. In the end, I lost my money because I usually couldn't say no to all the emergencies my family and friends had. I have horrible medical problems and terrible insurance. That money was supposed to be there for that, and when the handout stopped, I lost people, and the money is gone too. Don't be me. Pirate Name says, I was also this person. I had a ridiculously high-paying job at 19 and lived at home. Once I moved out at 21, I had a huge savings account, which my boyfriend at the time found out about and told many people. I have been told many times that I'm a doormat and, oh boy, did everyone take advantage of that over the next three years. I got rid of all those people from my life, but now struggle to make ends meet most months. Lucky Luck says, Ask your girlfriend not to talk to her family any more about your finances. When any of them try to bring it up, change the subject or tell them that you are still grieving for your mother and you can't talk about it. You don't owe these people anything, and as far as your girlfriend, if you see that she's starting to give more than she can afford to Leslie, ask her to sit down with you and talk about the shared household budget and ask her to look realistically at how much help she can give while remaining solvent. As long as your girlfriend isn't changing, and the issue with Leslie seems to be mostly about the kid on the way, which would have happened even without the inheritance, the rest of her family can't do anything to you unless you let them, and it looks like you won't fall for that. Good luck the two of you, and my condolences. Sorry about your mum. Of course you're emotional about this money. It's what your mum's left you. If your inheritance were a collection of salt and pepper shakers, you'd be upset to know that they're appraising it too. I suggest that you have a heart-to-heart -heart with girlfriend about the money. Before people marry, talking about money is essential. Explain that it's your mum's business and you intend to grow it instead of cashing out. Discuss the type of lifestyle you'll have that will allow you to grow the company that will be a good balance of freedom, pleasure, attracting attention, and sustainability. Make sure she's on side and understands that this means that there can be some woo, we're rich, but it comes at a cost. Namely, alienating others. I suggest doing what so many pro bowlers do. Offer everyone a job. Explain that you're not the manager, so the manager has to treat them like anyone else, but you will get them hired. If you don't want them at your company, buy a franchise and hire an experienced manager with those instructions. Everyone with their handout gets a job, but no one is promised that they get to keep that job. Help the sister in the legal emergency, but overall, you need money, here's a job, will be your stock answer. Sure, you aren't enjoying the money yet, it's not free, it came with the loss of your mum, and girlfriend has to get that. But if you plan well, it can mean much more freedom. Don't let it be a burden. And now, on to the update. First, I just want to say wow! This whole thing blew up and has made me feel much better about the whole situation. Thank you everyone for your understanding, condolences, and advice. I read the lottery winning thread that many of you linked to, and while I'm not currently $300 million richer, I will look into a smaller scale version of all the things that you offered up. I'm not sure if it's worth writing a whole update, but last night I called my sister and drove an hour to her house and stayed the night with her, her husband, and my nieces and nephew. Over some beers, she and I started talking about the whole situation. Oddly, it's the first time we've really talked about anything alone without attorneys or my other siblings around since my mother died. Side note, she passed away on March 8th, and I know there was at least one comment that said this seemed like everything was moving too fast. Anyway, it turns out she isn't as together about everything as I thought she was. I showed her the thread and all of the replies, and both she and I agreed to talk to a financial advisor and look into getting attorneys to help us with this. She had been primarily working with my mum's attorney up until now. I'm going to look into setting up a trust as well. Nothing too crazy, but enough that I can give small gifts to these people to have a cap on it, so to speak, for whenever it does come up. I talked to my girlfriend on the phone this morning and kind of laid it all out, and she was in total agreement. She said that she was surprised Casey has suddenly started talking to me and that it was very suspicious. She also said that Terry's wife brought up the kids again and was showing her houses they wanted to get that were way out of their price range, 
and my girlfriend kind of played dumb and just kept asking questions about how they plan to afford all of that, so I know she and I, for now at least, are on the same page. Lastly, when I was talking to my sister last night, she said something that both uplifted and destroyed me. We were talking about our mum and what a hard ass she was, and my sister said that one of the last conversations she had with our mum, my mother said, You and brother trust OP. He knows what he's doing, and he will make sure that everyone is okay. Anyway, thank you all again for all of your comments. I feel like a better and stronger person just one day later. In the comments, I think you're making the best decision. People are absolute vultures if you allow them to be, so you must protect yourself. I'm glad your girlfriend is on board with you. That's a great aspect of this because if she hadn't been, this could have been way more complicated. Again, I'm sorry about your mother. It sounds like she truly loved you and your sister greatly. People show love in different ways. Good luck with everything. OP replies, She has been nothing but wonderful and supportive throughout all of this. 100% the woman of my dreams. We started talking today about going away for a long vacation at some point when everything settles down. I think we need it. And you're spot on about my mum. She was a hard lady to know, and I wish we had more good years together. But I'm so grateful for the five or so years that we had, which I know most people don't ever get. I'm in your shoes. My grandparents were wealthy and no one knew. I'm glad you're getting a trust. You must have that, and a financial advisor is a must also. Do your own research on the financial advisor. I would really try to keep low-key around friends. On gifts, I don't do it. People will take advantage and come back for more. I would get books by Dave Ramsey on how to best handle your wealth, and on a personal note, I hate it when people say that you're lucky. A loved one had to die to get that money. I didn't win the lottery, and I still work 68 to 72 hours a week, and I like what I do. Short Lemon says, Quote, you and brother trust OP. He knows what he's doing and he will make sure everything is okay. She knew the whole time. This part had me tearing up too. It's clear from your last post that the things that you value, love, family, trust, and respect are the things that you surround yourself with on a daily basis. You said that your mother too grew bitter and you recognized how she got to that point. You are actively trying to avoid it and that's good, OP. That's amazing. My only advice to you is to not get caught up in the nostalgia, and I think you already know this, whether that's by 1. Deluding yourself into thinking that the monetary handouts will restore your past. It seems like you know this, but speaking from experience, don't get lost. 2. Growing bitter now that life is different. I think you're going to be just fine, OP. The road might be bumpy, but it's heading to a good place. And thanks to your wife too, you've got a great team member on your hands. And OP replies, Thank you. Throughout all of this, she has been my rock. And if anything, it has really shown me that she is the person that I need to spend the rest of my life with, no question. And I think that is a lovely note to end this one on, guys. I do think that is someone that OP can trust, now that they have had a serious talk about this with each other. This is a very turbulent time for the both of them, and I imagine that it isn't easy. I'm sending all of my love and kindness out to you guys. Anyway, that is all that I have for you today, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought about all of this in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.